Hello and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and in today's video we're going to recycle some material out of this uh, old WI case uh, three plow bottom plow. I'm sorry I said WI case, JI case. Uh, manufactured in Racing, Wisconsin. Now after mentioning that we we're going to tear this down I mentioned it in the last video. Several folks commented about they'd have a hard time doing that uh, to an old sentimental piece. Uh, uh, and and I might would if this was a uh, uh, piece that held really held any sentimental value. It did belong to my father. Uh, he bought it in the late 70s, maybe early 80s, as a used implement. Uh, and we used it for a few years here on the farm, but uh, uh, he, not long after that, gave up farming entirely. Uh, he had was already out of tobacco farming, just doing a little corn and soybeans. But he pretty much got out of farming entirely. And this plow never really got a lot of use. Now, as far as its value as a farm implement right now, it really doesn't have much more than scrap value, uh, scrap iron value. Uh, there's a used farm implement dealer about 50 miles south of me that might on a good day give me a hundred maybe a hundred fifty dollars for this uh, and that's stretching it folks just don't use this size uh, just don't break land around here anymore this is a breaking plow uh, most everything today is no-till uh, the land across the road from me out here that's uh, been in soybeans or corn for the last 20 years uh, has probably not had the ground turned over more than once or twice. Uh, and the size of this is another reason it doesn't hold much value. This is too big for the, for the farmer that, or for the homeowner that wants to have his little garden in the backyard or maybe even the hunter that wants to uh, to set up a deer plot, uh, a feeding plot. It's a bit too big for that, and it's way too small for the large tobacco farmers that are still in business around here. They would have, instead of three plows, as this one is, they'd probably have eight, 10, even 12 plows uh, pulling behind their tractors. To me, the plow is worth a whole lot more in the scrap iron. There's some uh, flat bar in this. Give me just a second to get my tape measure and I'll give you some dimensions. The majority of the metal, sheet metal in this is that's an inch and a quarter wide by two and a half inches inch and a quarter thick by two and a half inches wide and this piece alone if straightened out would be almost six foot long. <coughs> There's a piece of it here, piece here, piece here, and a piece over here. There's right much of this flat bar in it. This is half inch by two and a half inch flat bar. That'll be easy enough to straighten out. And there's also at each one of the legs, there's some six inch, I mean, there's some half inch thick plate. There's two here, two on this one, and two on that one. In addition, there's some more flat bar behind these wings down here. There, that's an inch and a half by three-eighths. That's three pieces of that. It's a lot of, lot of metal I can use out here in the tin barn. Uh, as I did point out in the previous uh, series of videos on the uh, jacks, if I'd had this apart, I could have used these steel plates instead of spending almost $20 a piece for the two steel plates that I use. Uh, these pieces in the upper hitch part right here, I have an immediate need for them. Uh, the video, the planned video after this one, maybe if not the next one, the second one out, will be using these, the ends off of these. I had already taken this off. I had the plow sitting back over here in front of the tin barn, and I had already taken these off, and then I got to thinking about uh, all right, these are going to be pretty heavy pieces. I need some kind of lift. And then it dawned on me. You guys remember all that time 
videos I spent putting this I beam up here and the uh, electric winch on it. Well, I got it sitting close enough underneath it now that I can pick these heavy pieces up. I've got a pallet sitting right over here. I'll be able to swing them over to that and uh, have somewhere to store the stuff. But these pieces right here, as I said, I'd already had them off and then realized that uh, this might make a decent video. So I put them back on loosely. What I'm going to do right now is, is pull these top pieces off. These bolts are fairly loose. All right, now that was a considerably easier the second time around than it was the first time around. Those bolts were on there very, very tight. And you might have noticed in a uh, couple places there was some new bolts in there. That was where I simply took the uh, bandsaw, they were easy to get to, and cut those old bolts off. Now, to hold these bottom legs on, there are two, four, six, seven, eight, nine of these three quarter inch bolts with the inch and an eighth heads. I've got, uh, that's actually there's 10 of them. I've got nine of them broke loose right now. This one right here is not broke loose. I'm gonna show you what it took to try to, try to get that, uh, those bolts to where I can move them. I started out with the uh, half inch drive uh, uh, impact gun. They didn't budge it. Well, that didn't budge. I then went with the inch and eighth wrench and I'm sure some of you have done this before. Put one wrench on, and then second wrench for leverage. Didn't budget, I couldn't budget. Third thing I tried was the inch and eighth pull bar. And of course that was shorter than the two wrenches. So I put a cheater pipe on and still can't move it. So here's what I did and now it's time for everybody to cringe. But at least I did it with a pull bar and not a ratchet. This is a half inch drive pull bar. And this is a six foot piece of galvanized pipe. And that's what it took to break these 10 bolts apart. As a matter of fact, they were on there so rusty and tight. Let me grab a few of these pieces. The lock washers that were on, on them it actually broke them in half on several. So what I'm gonna do now that I've got these broke loose, I'm gonna put you in a little bit of a time lapse and I'm gonna start with the, uh, with the air wrench now that I've got these broke loose and see if I can, see if I can move them. If not, I'll go with various cheater bars. I have a ratchet on now, 
and I'm going to use a cheater bar, but it's a considerably shorter cheater bar. And by the way, I broke these bolts loose a little over a week ago, and I've had penetrating oil, uh, had them doused in penetrating oil since that time. So they're pretty heavy rusted. Okay folks, that's the that's the six out of the top. And that last one kind of took my breath. The way these plows worked on these bottom plows, uh, catch my breath a minute, old man that smoked way too many years. Whew. There's a leg coming up from, from the sweep, the uh, shin, the point, and the heel down here that actually did the plowing anywhere from six, eight, maybe even 10 inches deep in the ground. That shank that's coming up pivots on another one of these three quarter inch bolts right down here. And at this point, or it pivots if it breaks this shear bolt that's up here. This shear bolt is a looks like a three eighths, maybe a half inch, excuse me, it is a half inch bolt. I'll be interested to see once uh once I get one of them out if they're partially cut in two or if they're uh, just standard half inch bolts. I know at some point in time this one up here on the front had sheared and just a half inch carriage bolt was put in there. That's going to be a job to get out I'm sure. But what would cause that to shear would be if one of these plows hooked a rock or more common in this area hooked a tree root and was not able to break the root, it would twist that plow back and shear that bolt. But let's get this, uh, these three quarter inch bolts that's in the bottom of each one of them. If you notice, I'm not knocking any bolts out yet until I get all the heads off. Now I have no real hopes of saving any of these bolts. Some of these 5 8 bolts might slide out, but if you notice when I was taking the nuts off of them, for the most part, the bolt didn't even turn. There was a couple I had to put the wrench on, but that means they're, they're rusted pretty solid inside here as well. 
I'm going to try knocking out these five eighths ones. Alright, just got a little tension on that now. And I'm going to try to knock these two back bolts out. And that should free up the heaviest of this uh, large stock right here. Alright, I'm going to try to keep myself clear of anything that might decide to fall. The winch is not directly over any of these pieces. It's closest on this heaviest piece, but uh, hopefully the plow won't try to turn over in that direction. And I won't have to get this bolt out uh, before I can pick that up, simply because it's sandwiched between these two plates. So I'm going to come over here to this one. That'll be a lot easier to get out once I can get some swing over here. Okay, there we go. We can we can move this over just a little bit. Now I should be able to get this one out. All right, we're gonna have to go ahead and take these old ones apart. That seems to be rusted pretty solid right there. Now this is one of the bolts that was designed to shear off. I'm just curious to see what it looks like. Alright, and this piece broke loose then. Let's see if we can get it out of the way. Alright, let me show you this one. This is one of the bolts that was designed to be a shear bolt. And as you can see, they have been cut in two places halfway through. So that was the design to, to shear off instead of breaking that uh, shank leg. Uh, if the plow got hung on a uh, stump or a root, I'm going to continue working on this as far as getting these two plates off and then we'll bring you back each time we get ready to take a section loose. I won't bore you with, with pulling bolts on the whole plow. But I'll bring you back when we get ready to take another one down. When I was going over all the different things I tried to break these bolts loose, I'm sure some of you are probably wondering, well why didn't, why didn't you try heat? Uh, I don't have an acetylene torch out here. I've never had one in the tin barn. There's been occasions where one would be nice, but for the most part, it's just an expense I, I didn't really want to, uh, to encounter every month from tank rental and so forth. I did try the little one pound propane bottle tanks, but when you're talking about this much bulk steel right here, it didn't phase it. Just trying to tap them bolts out with the uh, two pound hammer and they, they just don't want to budge. I've hit them pretty hard and finally moved it about an eighth of an inch on that side. So you know what you do when one hammer don't work? You get a BFH. Let's try the three pound. Oh yeah. Alright, I think that's going to come off and I should be able to handle this one without the hoist. Nice steel. Like I say, I'll bring you back when we get ready to take another section apart. Okay, I'm ready to take this hitch assembly off the front up here. Uh, 
you see I got the jack under this side of the plow when I went to taking these bolts loose over here the plow wanted to tip over so I just set that in place I'm going to remove it now and I'm pretty much just going to let this piece fall to the ground uh, I've got the winch back here on this piece of lower stock when I knock this bolt out there won't be anything holding pressure against on this middle plow. So we'll knock this one out now. Whoa, it like to got my toe. I wasn't watching where it was gonna fall. Now this piece I will carry this into the uh to the dirty side of the tin barn get this up on the uh, welding bench got some cutting to do here to salvage this piece and these pieces of plate right here so for right now I'm just gonna set this to the side and let's see if we can get a couple of these bolts in the uh, center section knocked out this is obviously not hanging straight the, uh, the winch is over about this much but it at least to keep it from uh, wildly falling all right if anything it wants to tilt back now uh-huh no harm no foul All right, I'm going to have to remove this uh, uh, shear bolt from this one as well. All right, let me get some stuff out of the way, and I'll bring you back shortly. Okay, she's getting a little bit antsy right now, a little bit uh, tricky to hold. The reason this back plow is setting up by itself it has got a roller on the back of it to keep the whole plow from digging down into the ground too far. I'll show you more of that in just a bit. I've got the uh, very front plow pulled up out of the way over there. And I've got this one strung up. Now I know when I knock this bottom bolt out down here, uh, or if I knock this top bolt out, this is going to, the two pieces are going to separate and they're going to fall. And I realize that. I'm going to try to take that bottom one out first. This bolt that was in here that was used to replace the uh, shear bolt, and I don't know whether that's something Daddy did or it was like that when he got it, but in any case, it's rusted in there solid. I'm going to uh, just have to get on that a little bit more where I got it on a solid surface on the ground or on the welding table. But right now, we're going to see if we can get these apart. When I lock this bolt out, I know this is going to fall, and this assembly is probably going to swing this way a little bit. So I'm going to put my phone in the, tell you what, I'll just set it over here out of the way and kind of brace that with my leg a little bit. All right, she didn't fall yet. Well, that's because this bolt's still in there. Okay. bit anticlimactic, wasn't it? Let's lift a little bit. There she fell. Alright, I'm going to put this piece in place. Then I'm going to work on getting that uh, substitute bolt out of, uh, out of here. Alright, I got one of the plows lifted up in the air now, so I just give you a little idea of what this is made out of and what I can salvage off of this. This is this part right here was called the point. This was the shin and we always call this the wing. I'm probably going to save these pieces uh, for a friend that makes knives that does a little blacksmithing because I suspect this is probably some uh, hardened steel right here. Uh, I know a set of points would, would usually last about 
maybe maybe three years, two to three years on on a plow if it was used regularly. Uh, but on the back, again, it was the point, the shin, the, the uh, wing. On the back was what was called the heel. And as you can see, this one, and the same case on all three of the plows, was worn completely out. As a matter of fact, this was the original heel, and this looks like a piece of angle iron that I probably welded onto it at some point during the time that Daddy was using it. But on this back, we got some more steel plate uh, that the, the shin and the wing bolted to, and this uh, leg right here. A lot of weld on it. Uh, I'll probably just set this off to the side, and if I if I need it, I'll carry it to the local welding shop uh, and get him to torch these pieces off. But on the back, we got another piece of flat bar that's plenty usable and this leg and the next project I got coming up I made a leg very similar in style to this if I had just realized at the time I was doing that project and actually tore up a piece of equipment I'll show you that in the next video but uh, if I had realized what was in this one uh, it would have made that task a whole lot simpler but I'm not going to try to take this apart out here, hang it up. I'm going to carry these into the, uh, uh, just like I'm going to do the hitch piece over there. I'm going to carry these uh, to the other side of the shop, the tin barn, and set them up on the welding bench where I can get to them and put some force on them. What I'll do is pick each one of these up separately, back my pickup under here, let them down in the back of the pickup, carry it over to the other side of the the barn where I've got a, uh, <clears throat> a chain hoist over the uh, welding table. Let me swing the camera around and I'll show you the pieces that we uh, uh, that we can make immediate use out of. Alright, that's six pieces of this uh, half inch thick plate and if I wanted to go 12 inches I could get uh, a 3 inch by 12 inch. Uh, I could easily get 6 by 8 pieces out of that. Uh, 4 by 4 by 6 pieces. Lots of potential right there in these. Remember I said this, uh, this hitch piece, I'll carry it in there to the uh, welding table up at a height where I don't have to bend over a lot. Get this draw bar out of there. Uh, this piece of flat bar, another piece of plate right here. Uh, some of that will take a little work. They'll be the last pieces that I use. Uh, may not ever in my lifetime get to using them. This material, the big stuff, which is the two and three quarter by, let's see, what did I say that was? Inch and a quarter. There's almost 20 foot of that. Uh, if I take out the bends, one, two, three, four, five, six, let's say I, I lose six inches uh, in the bends, so that would be 36 inches, about three foot. So that's 17 foot of good usable material, this big stuff in here. The uh, half inch by, by two and a half, I believe that is. Yeah, half inch by two and a half. Let's see, there's about tw two and a half foot. That's five. And another three. There's eight foot of that. Plenty usable. As a matter of, again, I'm going to straighten these bins out. I'll put these pieces into forge. Heat those up, straighten them out, and I'm going to cut these ends off for this next upcoming project. Then there's this piece of, uh, that's a three quarter by two inch. And I could probably straighten that out at forge and anvil too. That'd be about two foot long. So I'm gonna load these pieces up on the truck, the, the plow parts, load them up on the truck, and then we'll do a quick recap. Be thinking of what you think all this is going to weigh. 
because you know me, I got to weigh everything. Uh, I'm not going to tell you in this video, but leave me a comment of what you think that whole bottom plow weighed just like it was. Well, there you have it, folks, the uh, dismantlement of a J.I. Case 3 by 14 bottom plow. Uh, I hope you got a little bit out of this. Uh, as I said, some of the, uh, the material I salvaged out of this uh, will be used in an upcoming project, most likely my next project, but if not, two projects out. But it'll be used in it. It'll be a fabrication project as well. Again, leave me a comment down below what you think this whole thing weighs. I weighed uh, each one of the plows separately, so I would have a uh, uh, distinct weight. And I was actually surprised that that back plow weighed 30 pounds more than the middle and the front plow. That, uh, that leveling wheel in the back makes a big difference. But... Just for the fun of it, drop me a comment on what you think the whole thing weighs. You guys take care, and I'll see you on the next video. Mm -hmm.